California state lawmakers are proposing a bill that decriminalizes pregnancy loss. But opponents of the bill say the new laws could legalize infanticide. NCD's Cynthia Kai gives us a closer look at the bill. The State Assembly Judiciary Committee passed a proposed bill to bar criminal prosecution into the suspicious death of an unborn or newborn. Assemblywoman Buffy Wicks introduced Assembly Bill 2223 in February. AB 2223 is intended to protect against the criminalization of pregnancy outcomes, and people should not be uh, and people should not be subject to prosecution for any uh, tragic situation that may happen during their pregnancy. Wicks said during the April 5th hearing that the bill decriminalizes pregnancy loss. Prosecutors in this state have charged people with homicide offenses for pregnancy loss. Two examples are the cases of Chelsea Becker and Adora Perez, two California women who were recently prosecuted and imprisoned for their stillbirths. Becker and Perez both experienced stillbirths after consuming methamphetamine during their pregnancies. Samantha Lee, the attorney for Chelsea Becker, expressed support for the bill at the hearing. Meanwhile, hundreds of opponents appeared in person or called into the committee to express their concerns. According to AB 2223, a mother or healthcare provider's actions or omissions cannot be held responsible for miscarriage, stillbirth, or abortion, or perinatal death of a baby. But perinatal is not precisely defined in the bill. Dean Broyles, attorney and president of the National Center for Law and Policy, said, depending on how the term perinatal is interpreted by the courts, this bill legalizes the infanticide of children several weeks after their birth and possibly as late as their first birthday. Existing law requires a county coroner to investigate the death of an unborn or newborn baby after 20 weeks into pregnancy, resulting from suspected self-induced or criminal abortion. Years. AB 2223 Years. would make it so that the coroner would no longer be required to investigate such deaths. The coroner's statement would be prohibited from being used on a death certificate for prosecution in such cases. In the end, lawmakers voted to advance the bill. AB 2223 was referred to the Assembly Health Committee for another hearing at a later date. Law enforcement in Orange County say they made the largest drug bust in 16 years. The district attorney's office filed felony charges against the two suspects. Entity Cynthia Kai has the details on how big the seizure was. The Orange County District Attorney's Office filed felony charges on Wednesday against two Buena Park drug dealers. Buena Park police officers pulled over a minivan leaving a house on March 17th. In the minivan, police found 821 pounds of meth, 189.7 pounds of cocaine, and 20.5 pounds of fentanyl pills. A lethal dose of fentanyl is as little as 2 milligrams. Authorities say 20.5 pounds is enough to kill 4.7 million people. District Attorney Spitzer said, with fentanyl in an estimated 40% of street drugs, it's not a matter of if, but when someone you know and love dies from fentanyl. We have to continue to do everything we can to combat this deadly drug epidemic and save lives. Edgar Alfonso Lamas, 36, and Carlos Regoza Paredes, 53, have been charged with multiple felony counts of possession, transportation, and sale of a controlled substance. Both men face a maximum sentence of 37 years and 4 months if convicted on all charges. They have pleaded not guilty and remain in custody in lieu of a $5 million bail. A preliminary hearing is set for June 7th at the North Justice Center in Fullerton in Department N3. A crowd gathered outside of Disney's headquarters in Los Angeles to protest a recently passed Florida law regarding gender identity. They held signs and chanted, Boycott Disney. NCD's Eileen Ang has more. Go Woke, Go Broke was a central message from protesters who gathered outside the Walt Disney Company's Burbank headquarters on Wednesday. About 150 people attended the rally in opposition to the company's stance against the recently passed Florida law that prohibits schools from teaching their youngest students about sexual orientation and gender identity. 
According to Rob McCoy, the former mayor of Thousand Oaks and pastor at Godspeak Calvary Chapel, it's absolutely a necessary event. He said many people were raised on Disney films, but now the iconic family entertainment company has been taken over by a woke agenda. Florida passed a parental rights law in March that prohibits public school teachers from teaching lessons on sexual orientation or gender identity or any instruction that is not age appropriate or developmentally appropriate with children in kindergarten through third grade. Disney took a stance against the legislation after company employees staged a walkout protest against the bill at its Florida resort. According to a Disney spokesperson, Florida's HB 1557, also known as the Don't Say Gay Bill, should never have been passed and should never have been signed into law. The company was standing up for the rights and safety of LGBTQ members. The group plans to continue protesting Disney and any elected official who supports extending the company's copyright license for its Mickey Mouse mascot character. In two years, the copyright will expire and enter into public domain. The People's Convoy is expected to reach Los Angeles on April 10th, just in time for the Defeat the Mandates rally at Grand Park. The convoy, protesting government use of power, will meet up with medical speakers like Dr. Robert Malone. Brian Braze, a trucker and co-organizer of the People's Convoy, told the Epic Times he expects to reach Phoenix, Arizona on April 6th. He said there are about 500 vehicles made up of trucks, cars, campers, and motorcycles. Organizers announced last week that they were headed to California to protest proposed legislation related to COVID-19 mandates. The convoy has listed 10 bills that it opposes on its website, including the defeated Assembly Bill 1993. The bill would have required proof of COVID-19 vaccinations for all employees and independent contractors to work in California. Braze said, 1993 being thrown out was definitely a win. We're happy to see that, but we've still got nine others that we need to fight. After the Los Angeles rally, organizers are hopeful they will be able to meet with lawmakers when they reach Sacramento. Climbing fuel costs has made it challenging for local food banks and small towns to decide who pays for food deliveries. The difficulties come with a new California law mandating grocery stores to donate leftover food. Trash bags filled with baguettes, brioche buns, bagels, and shibata rolls filled an SUV outside of Panera Bread in Chico, California. It's bound for a nearby community shelter to feed up to 140 homeless guests. And it's all wholesome, good produce. Some people think that uh, the food bank just gets discarded food, and that's not the case at all. These small food deliveries happen across the nation every day. But in California, they're now required by law, which took effect in January. It requires national retailers like Amazon and Kroger to donate unsold food and compost anything inedible. But climbing fuel costs and uncertainty over who pays for food recovery has challenged local food banks and small towns who are tasked with implementing the law. Our main goal here is to um, distribute as much food as, as the area needs. Um, that always takes more money. And uh, the more we have to spend on fuel, the less food we can buy. It's uh, pretty cut and dry. The agency developed an app known as 530 Food Rescue that connects restaurants and grocery stores to volunteers who can collect donations and drop them off at food aid organizations. One developer said it's a win-win situation for both sides. As far as getting good food to people who are facing food insecurity, um, while keeping great food out of the landfill where it causes, um, exacerbates climate change. While other states restrict food going into landfills, California is the first to require food be donated for human consumption. 